Has losing weight been a area of difficulty for you? I can totally relate because my weight loss journey was not an easy one and it's still a battle from time to time. And I just want you guys to understand what makes weight loss happen. Yes, it is a calories in calories out game, but for some of us, weight loss can be difficult. There are people who are fit in other parts of their body, but they seem to hold a lot of abdominal fat or a lot of visceral fat. There are people who seem to be at a healthy weight, but their body fat percentage is higher than normal. This is what we call quote unquote skinny fat. And I wanna highlight the importance of understanding why weight loss resistance happens and to give you tips on how to burn that stubborn fat. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Diela Joy and I made this transformation. On my weight loss journey, I've dealt with a lot of things. I gave birth to my son, got an injury that allowed me to balloon up to almost 300 pounds. And then after that, I got into a car accident, found my rhythm with one meal a day, which is a method of fasting where you fast for 20 hours a day and eat within an hour eating window or a four hour eating window, depending on how long you fast. And right now I'm currently dedicating my life to helping people not only lose weight, but to gain strength in their body, to reduce their stress levels and to gain mobility. A lot of people are having a lot of pain because of desk jobs, sitting down. I've seen clients where they're having a lot of thoracic spine pain and they're having neck pain. So my life isn't just dedicated to weight loss. It's making people healthy and strong as a whole because the human body was meant to move. So now let's get into today's topic at hand, which is basically mastering insulin sensitivity. So the reason why I was able to make this transformation is because I started off with insulin sensitive diets. When people struggle with stubborn weight, or they hold weight in their abdominal area, that is telling you there is a hormonal issue. Insulin is a hormone that is responsible for basically bringing glucose inside the cell to be metabolized and used for energy. Insulin plays a number of key roles in our body. Just besides that, it is involved in protein synthesis. So that's why you get some bodybuilders injecting themselves with insulin, which isn't the smartest thing to do. But we're gonna focus on this role of insulin, which is uptaking glucose into the cell to be used as energy. Also, insulin helps to regulate fat metabolism. Now, when it comes to fat metabolism, this is a key. When insulin levels are high, our body is in a state of fat storage. When insulin levels are high, for a prolonged period of time, people become insulin desensitized. So they become insulin resistant. They're not sensitive to insulin. And when that happens, that's when metabolic mayhem happens. And what people don't understand, insulin resistance is not only a key characteristic for people who are quote unquote diabetic. When we see people with diabetes, they're at a long-term stage of illness. You can have insulin resistance without being quote unquote medically diabetic. And this happens a lot with people who are morbidly obese. This happens a lot with people who tend to hold abdominal fat. So I'm gonna talk about options on how you can reduce your insulin resistance naturally. So the keto diet is one of the most popular diets. When you're first starting your weight loss journey and you're struggling really hard, it is important to put your state yourself in a state of low blood sugar. You wanna keep those blood sugars low because when those blood sugars are low, insulin won't be high and insulin will not promote fat storage. So keto diet is one way to do that. Basically eating 50 grams of carbs or less, net carbs or less, and focusing on high fat to moderate protein. I lost my weight with keto OMAD and keto. With keto OMAD, I did the 80-20 rule. So 80-20 means 80% fat, 20% protein and carbs are sparing. So a typical macronutrient day on my keto days would look something similar to this. I would basically have 
like a good 80%, maybe like 77 to 80% fat, which is fine. You don't have to hit those numbers to a T. My protein would be around 18 to 20%. And my carbs per day, I would have anywhere between 18 to 30. You don't want to go too low in carbs. For some people, they can. Personally, I'm not a fan of going super low in carbs. Some people need it due to other metabolic ailments. And when I say super low in carbs, I'm referring to the carnivore diet. I don't like the carnivore diet. I have my opinions about it. It did not give me energy. Perhaps I wasn't eating the right meals or the food. It is what it is. My body relaxed well with keto. And you got to remember that everyone's different. Certain people can do really well on a really super low carb diet where they're eating two grams of carbs coming from like beef, like beef liver, or there are people who just thrive on keto. Another way to bring those insulin levels down is through fasting. And this is probably the best way to do it. Intermittent fasting consistently. So if you are struggling with resistant weight loss, it doesn't matter what form of fasting you use as long as you do it consistently. Some people who've struggled with diabetes for years, they may have to do more of an extreme form. But it is important to understand when you are fasting for a very long time, you need to learn how to properly eat. The one thing I cannot stand is someone who just fasts away, but they're not eating properly. The reason why you're in your state to begin with is that you're not eating properly. So if you're gonna use these tools to help bring your insulin levels down, to help put you in a state of fat burning, best be sure that you are eating a proper diet, that you're eating foods that won't spike your insulin. Now there's another way to do it with carbohydrates and I will touch on this briefly, but I don't want people who are struggling, I shouldn't say I don't, but Everyone's different. I can't blanket state for everybody. The only way I would know is I'm, if it's, is if I'm coaching people individually, I can understand and see how their body reacts. But um, introducing carbs should be something that happens later on, especially if you have not lost a significant weight. Some people can still lose weight on carbs. They have to eat the right carbohydrates and they have to eat it at the right time. So let's talk about becoming insulin sensitive with carbs. Key to this. If you are not a physical exerciser, you don't exercise a lot, eat your carbs early in the morning. Some people may disagree with this, but I find that if you eat carbohydrates early in the morning, you're able to burn off it throughout the day. Another key thing is to eat your carbs around your, your workout. So let's say you end up having an evening workout after work, that's fine. Before you start your workout, have some carbs. After you start your workout, have some carbs. It's gonna help with recovery. It's gonna help with muscle growth and so forth. I'm not against using carbs, it's just a matter of using the right carbohydrates. So what are the right carbohydrates? It's gonna be different for most people. Some people can have rice, some people can't, but I'm gonna state nature's carbs. Rice and I are best friends. I have no problems with rice. Um, natural carbs, avoid processed carbs. So natural carbs like rice, natural carbs like sweet potato, yam, avocado has some carbs in there, blueberries, bananas, fruits, never be afraid of fruit. No one is gaining tons of weight just eating fruit, maybe high fructose corn syrup, but that is not fruit. That's processed fruit. That's processed food. And just being able to make smart choices with what you eat. So I'm just gonna reiterate my points quickly. Number one, in order. Fasting is the best way to do it. Intermittent fasting consistently over time, compounded over time, will get your body into a state of healing and making itself more insulin sensitive. Number two, a low carb to keto diet is the next best thing. Making sure you're keeping those fat levels high because when you eat a lot of fat, it keeps those insulin levels down. Protein's the second one carbs are the third. And the third is if you're going to eat carbohydrates, eat it in a way that you are not spiking your insulin. Eat it with lots of protein. Eat it with lots of fiber. Eat carbs around your workouts or carbs first thing in the morning. Don't eat carbs naked. Always eat carbs with some protein and some fiber to help negate the insulin or glucose level spike response. So if you eat carbs naked, you will spike your glucose levels. If you eat carbs with protein and you eat carbs with fat, you won't. And be careful of the choices of carbohydrates you choose. 
Safe cards are nature's cards. Avoid process cards and you're a winner. Anyway, I hope this video made sense. I'm super tired, so I'm just trying to wing it as we go. If you made it this far into the video, just type in the word wing it because that's me right now. And I'm sending you guys bad luck. Take care. Bye.